Rees-Mogg. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. In some ways, I feel that Christmas has come early because here we are with three hours to debate parliamentary procedure, one of my <laughs> favourite activities. Indeed, I look forward to estivating in Somerset and talking with my family about all the intricacies of um, standing orders. So I feel in many ways fortunate. And it has been a particularly happy and fortunate debate with two brilliant uh, maiden speeches. My <laughs> honourable friend, the member for Angus, a constituency which I've had the privilege of visiting and know its manifold beauties, put the case for the union perfectly and also should be hired by her tourist board to encourage further visits um, to her wonderful constituency. And the honourable lady, uh, the member for Battersea, was so generous to her predecessor, which is, I think, one of the great charms of maiden speeches, that we do recognise in them, if only briefly and if the only time in our political careers, that actually people on the other side aren't all bad. And it is very charming that that is done, and I think the Honourable Lady for Battersea did it particularly uh, well. But I want to come on to this important subject of Standing Order 14, subsection 2, and I have much sympathy with what the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Rhonda, said in a very well-considered speech, that it is the job of those of us on the back benches to hold the Government to account. And the job of holding the Executive to account is not just one of the Opposition benches, it is one for Government benches as well. Our Constitution works if it is balanced, and if the Government has to make its case and has to make uh, its arguments. But, and there is a but coming, and is why I think this motion, this debate today misfires, is that the Opposition has come to this too early, too soon in the Parliament, and has given an urgency to it that it does not deserve. In an intervention I made earlier, I questioned whether it was wise to have asked for this debate. Not, and Mr Speaker comes in now, whether it was wise to give it. I believe that Standing Orders, Standing Order 24, is an exceptionally valuable tool, and I'm glad, Mr Speaker, you're back in the chair now, because the more it is used, the better. It allows this House... Of course I give way. Not what he said, actually, and Hansard will show that wasn't what he said earlier on. And Standing Order 24, as he well knows, puts the onus completely in the hands of the Speaker to decide whether or not the matter is an urgent matter for debate, and the motion does not proceed if the Speaker doesn't believe it's an urgent matter. The wisdom of requesting the debate, not of granting it, and this is a very important distinction, because I think it is of the greatest importance that the Speaker, if asked for an emergency debate by the formal opposition, should in almost all circumstances grant it. And the reason I think that is that that is an important way for holding the government to account and inconveniencing the government. As the Honourable Gentleman, the member for the Rhonda, said, Standing Order 14 gives enormous power to the government to set out the business of this House, but there will be opportunities, and there need to be opportunities, when urgent matters are brought before it. But there, the opposition must be wise in what it asks for. And I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. In, in that, given that he's put on record that he believes that the Speaker should, in almost all circumstances, give way to a Standing Order 24 request from the opposition, I very much look forward to his support for the future applications that the opposition will have to make because of the lack of time for opposition day debates. But, but that's, that's where I think the opposition has today um, misfired to everything. Uh, there is a season and a time to any purpose under heaven. But this was not the season. This was not the time. There is so much that is going on of general urgency. And this strikes me as fiddling whilst Brussels burns, that we have this massive Brexit debate to consider. We have a still huge deficit to be debated. We have that great housing crisis that has been so starkly brought to our attention because of what happened at the Grenfell Tower. And what does Her Majesty's loyal opposition ask for? It asks for a debate on standing orders, a debate on a debate, a debate on conversation. Can this, even for one who loves procedure and thinks it is of great importance, be what is of most urgency to us today? It is a question of proportionality. 
and the Honourable Gentleman for the Ronda made so many important points about how this House has limited powers to hold a strong government to account and how it should do that. But to do it a few days into the beginning of a session, before there's been any real opportunity to discover whether there will be opposition days, well before it's decided whether there will be additional days given because it's a two-year session, I have no doubt further days will be given. And indeed, if we get a year from now, and all the 20 days have been used up, and the government sits there and stands there and comes to the dispatch box and said there will be no more days, I will be on the side of the opposition. I will support the opposition in asking for a proportional share during the second year of this session. That would be only right. I would also be in favour of the extra three days for the Scottish National Party, because that is what this Parliament ought to do. But that is where the Honourable Lady, the Shadow Leader, has misfired. This is too soon, it is too early, it is not genuinely urgent that the opportunity for, of course I'll give way. I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. But I, I, I sort of accept his point, maybe it is a bit too early, but he'll know the history of previous parliaments about ensuring they've got the select committees, the standing committees up and running, and opposition the, 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 the debates were granted. This is unusual. After 18 days, this has been set up after four weeks. Surely he must have some concerns about that. I, I, again, I, I think the uh, honourable gentleman is being premature. The issue really is the month lost between May and June that we have got to a fixed term Parliament Act. We have got used to having elections in May. We therefore expect these things to be up and running in time for the summer recess. Absolutely, I accept that. But this misses the point that the election was not under the Fixed Term Parliaments Act normal procedure, it was under the Extraordinary Procedure. We therefore assembled a month later, we were therefore closer to the summer recess, and the process of electing select committee chairman, the process of electing select committees, takes a little time. And I think the opposition is simply being unreasonable. If we were having this debate in our session in September, well, then they would have a fair point. If we were having it in October, they would have an outrageous point if they hadn't got any opposition day debates by then. But this session has hardly begun. It is in its infancy. It is like Sixtus, my newborn son. It is still, it is still in the mewling and puking stage. It has not reached the stage of toddling and walking and taking bold steps. And I'm afraid to say that this... Of course I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. Does he not agree when you raise a child one must try and instruct that child on good behaviour from the very beginning and not let it misbehave early on. And so therefore our role is surely to make sure the government does not misbehave early on. The honourable gentleman is a harsher authoritarian than I am. I think the strict discipline of a child yet a fortnight old would be unreasonable by any standards. And I, I hope, well, I'm just glad I'm, I'm not an infant in his household. That's all I can say, Mr Speaker. Um, but this is too early, and the problem with it being too early is that it comes when there are things of real gravity happening. We are in as uncertain a time as I can think of. There is so much of gravity that we need to grapple with. And when I said, Mr Speaker, that I think and I hope you would grant any reasonable request by the opposition for a Standing Order 24 debate, there are so many things they could have asked for. The Honourable Lady, in her opening speech, listed about a dozen things that could have been debated. And if one of those had been the request for an SO24, it would have been absolutely a sensible thing and would have added distinction and luster to this parliament. But standing here, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody else, but I've admitted I'm a procedural bore, discussing the intricacies of procedure when so much is going on is not in tune with the nation, is not serious opposition, is opportunism, and I think they should, if they can, withdraw the motion. You didn't frankly have the balls to put country before party.